How's it going everybody? So we're out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are focusing on the guard for the Full Tang 5160 buoy. Now the guard has to be done a little bit different on this particular knife because it's a full tang knife versus a hidden tang knife. On a hidden tang knife this area will be thinner and then we would just slide the guard over the tang and it would meet the ricasso area. But because this is a full tang knife I've got to make it to where the guard then has is kind of shaped like a U and goes up here and gets pinged into place where those holes are. So we got to do this a little bit different and leading up to this I've been trying to figure out what material I wanted to use for the guard. That I want to use brass, copper, mild steel, any number of materials. But the big deciding factor was the thickness. You know I needed it to be at least half of an inch thick here so I could drill my eighth inch holes, peen them into place, and still have plenty of material on either side of it. So, what materials did I have like that? <laughs> I happen to remember that I had some of these railroad clips right here. And this is roughly the size that I need it to be. Of course, not that big. That would be kind of crazy. But this section that's in the center here is kind of what I need. So. I was thinking, okay, I can cut this out, put it in the forge, texture it, do a few things like that, and then start doing everything that I needed to do to attach it to here. So I think what we're gonna do is go that route. We gotta go outside, we gotta cut it out with the angle grinder, and then we gotta throw it in the forge, kind of square it up, get some of our texturing going on there, and then we'll start playing around with it on the knife and figuring out how much material we actually need height-wise and all that. I don't want this to add a ton of weight. It's going to add some, but I think it's going to actually even out the knife a lot because it is very forward heavy and, and we need to kind of add a little bit of weight to the handle, but not much. But all in all, it's going to be a heavy knife no matter how you slice and dice it because how thick it is. But we want it to look good, be aesthetically pleasing, and functional. So all that stuff has to go into this. How am I going to save weight? What am I going to do to make everything work out? We'll figure that out as we go. Let's get outside. Let's cut this down. And let's start that process first and then go from there. So for this project, I'm only going to be using this centerpiece. But in a future video, I'm actually going to be forging the curled piece that is in the vise right now. I'm going to be forging that into a knife. Now that big chunk of steel is going to make a pretty large knife and I've seen videos of people forging these into katanas and stuff so I'm definitely going to make a, a cool looking knife out of that. Now at this point I've already flattened it a little bit with my rounding hammer and squared this little piece off but what I'm doing right now is just using a ball pin hammer to put a texture on this so that while I'm kind of fitting things up, I can see how a texture is going to look against the ricasso of the knife to make sure that's the route that I want to go. I'm going to be grinding off a lot of that texture when I'm squaring things up later, but this at least gives me an idea of what it's going to look like while I'm making everything and doing this process. Now we're going to start by flattening one side. This is going to be the side that will meet the handle scales later. So we want to go ahead and get it nice and flat because everything else is going to be squared off of it. So flatten it and then we can start measuring everything and figuring out how much we need to take off the sides, how much we need to take off the top to kind of get the initial squaring of everything and the initial measurements. And once we get it all squared, then we can start marking our lines for the slot and stuff like that. So once everything's squared, I went ahead and marked a center line. And right now I'm marking the lines for the slot that's going to be cut into this. The blade itself is about a quarter of an inch wide and this slot is right under that. 
So basically I'm gonna end up cutting it out and then filing it back to make it fit perfect. Now, I wanted to make sure that I had enough room between that slot and the sides to fit a set of scales. So I ended up using the scales that I just have as multiple sets of and figuring out, okay, I need that excess to be just over a quarter of an inch. So right now I'm marking that. So from the center line over to the line that I'm marking right now is a quarter of an inch wide. And then I'm gonna cut on the outside of those lines to give myself just a little extra room. And then we've gotta get the Ricasso measured so that we can then mark how deep we need to grind this slot. And I'm giving myself a little bit of extra room to where this guard will go up past the spine so that I can always grind it down to meet the spine later. Like I said, I'm gonna be cutting on the outside of the two outermost lines on this so that I give myself just a little extra room to be able to grind back or do the texture with and, and go that route. And then on the slot, we're going to be cutting on the inside of the lines and then filing it back to meet the Ricasso area so that we don't have any gaps or anything like that. You can always remove material, but it's very hard to add material back. Now we're going to go ahead and drill our holes through the guard. In the previous episode, I had drilled the holes through the Ricasso and already had that set up. So all I needed to do was follow those holes and drill them through the guard. Now we need to go through and start filing everything in this slot to make sure that it matches the Ricasso really well. And I will tell you what I did end up doing is I filed it just a hair too far. So whenever I go through and do this process right here, this is the, the first fit up of the guard to the actual knife itself. I did end up having a little bit of a gap where the base of the, the slot meets the bottom of the Ricasso area. And I did end up welding a little bit of material just inside there. I only needed to add about a sixteenth of an inch, but I did end up adding a little bit of material back and filled that gap exactly how I needed to fill it. But you'll see right now I'm using a brass hammer. The nice thing about this hammer is all of the times that I needed to put the guard on and take the guard off and put the guard on and take it off, I can and adjust it a little bit. I could use that brass hammer and it was not hurting the knife itself. The brass is softer than the knife and it doesn't actually hurt it even whether I'm sliding it up down the side or anything like that. So if you don't have a brass hammer, I, I highly suggest you get one. And there was a lot of this. There was a lot of putting the guard on, taking it off, putting the guard on, taking it off. A whole bunch of filing that went into this. But this first fit up is just trying to make sure that my pinholes matched up and so that I could see exactly how much I needed to fill in that little area that where I had the gap. The nice thing is there was no gaps on either side, so all I needed to do was add a little bit of material to the bottom and then file it away like what I'm doing right now. And then there was a bunch of 
filing and then putting the guard on and then filing and then sure enough putting the guard on and then when I was done putting the guard on I had to file some more and then I put the guard on <laughs> so the nice thing about this was I got it pretty close but not close enough I had to file some more <laughs> Once I did this last little bit of filing, it ended up lining up perfect, and I was done with that part. Then what I needed to do was cut off a little bit of the excess on the bottom of the guard, just to make it the right height. And once that was done, I ended up, started working on the finger choil area of the guard. Now, my camera decided to not want to focus on the the guard it wanted to focus on my hand for some weird reason but that aside you can see what I'm doing I'm just kind of removing a little bit of the material with the 2x72 because it's a lot faster than my oscillating spindle sander but removed a little bit on the 2x72 and then we're gonna be putting scallops in the bottom here we're gonna use the 2x72 to cut those in as well and this is just getting rid of the bulk of the material. I will tell you, I'm using a 36 grit belt on this. If you're gonna do this, just go slow. Don't get too crazy with it. Because again, you can't put the material back on. So all I'm doing is getting roughly to that line. And then I'm gonna use the spindle sander to grind it the rest of the way. Like I'm doing right here. I've got a 80 grit drum on this spindle sander. This is gonna grind it the rest of the way to that line and then smooth everything out. Because even though I'm putting a texture on this, I still need the things to be smooth and symmetrical. Now that we've done all of that, it's time to go ahead and put the texture on this. I'm using a 80 grit drum to do this. I end up using a few different drums to get everything that I wanted to do. I use an 80 grit drum and a 240 grit drum. Basically I start with the 80 grit drum and I get the rough pattern on there and then I come back with the finer drum and start fine tuning everything a little bit. So the trick to doing a really good pattern on this is to be pretty erratic with it. Don't, don't try and focus on making a real uniform pattern because that doesn't look natural. You want it to look like you could have hammered this in and it just ends up being a nice cool pattern without even focusing on it. <laughs> now, I will tell you, Whenever I'm doing the initial grinding to just start the pattern, I am going pretty uniform with it. I'm, I'm grinding roughly in the same little areas so that I can start putting the indentions. And then as you start going over those indentions, that's what gives you the extra lines and the craziness to it. This is definitely something that you want to play with and and try out. I, I do like this tool. It's less expensive than a small wheel attachment and it lets you use it for so many different things. But it's definitely turning out pretty cool. And you'll see it in the outro and see what it actually looks like. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here. Now this is where we're at so far. We got our guard on here. Everything's looking real good. Now you can see it's a different tone than it was whenever I was messing with it before. And that is because I went ahead and heat treated this. So quenched it, tempered it, all of that. So that whenever we acid etch the blade and the guard, it comes out the same tone. If I was to leave this unhardened, it wouldn't darken as much as the blades go into. So I wanted to go ahead and get that done so that whenever we go over and we hand sand the high peak or like the peaks of all this stuff, 
it actually shines and everything else stays nice and dark. So I'm going to be acid etching them separately, which is the reason why I haven't peened it into place yet. We just got our pins in there right now. Those are going to be what we're going to peen into place, but I haven't done that because I don't want to risk acid getting in between the guard and the tang because the acid will continue to deteriorate the steel in there and eat away at it and we don't want that to happen or give us a weak point. So we're going to etch the blade and then we're going to etch the guard and then after that's all etched, we'll peen everything together, texture that little area and then all we'll do is we'll just acid etch the little area where the pins are instead of the whole thing because I can acid etch those with a Q-tip. Now, in the next episode, we're going to focus on the acid etch and finish on this, both the blade and the guard, and then we'll go ahead and peen this into place. So you'll have all of that in the next episode, and it'll actually start coming together looking like a full knife. And then the episode after that, we're focusing on the handle build process. So got a lot going on now. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is the fact that if you're staying till this point, I am starting a daily vlog. I'm going to be doing this just for Christmas, so it's going to be starting tomorrow all the way through the 25th, and y'all are getting a really good bang for your buck because the episode that's getting released tomorrow is a full knife build. I had a knife that I'm making for a friend of mine's son. Y'all are going to get to see the whole build. It's a really awesome looking knife. It's going to be his first handmade knife, which is really cool, but that video is going to be released tomorrow, so you're going to get a full build video. Y'all should absolutely love that. And then from that point forward, going into like Thursday and all that, I'm going to be filming each thing that I'm doing at night, whether it be working on a knife, whether it be working on my car, whether it be building something for the shop. I'm going to film every single night, and I'm going to release about a 10-minute to 15-minute video every single day till the 25th. So y'all are going to have a lot of cool stuff. Now, I'm going to be doing that stuff, plus I'll still be doing the Shop Talk Tuesday build during this. So you're going to ha still have, on Shop Talk Tuesdays, a full episode dedicated to a part of knife making. You'll still get that every single week. Plus, I'm going to be making a full guard, like a full hand guard, uh, a post-apocalyptic cleaver during this whole vlog thing that we're doing. We'll have a few different builds, so it's going to be a good mixture of knife making, car stuff, just everything that I do each night. And I only do this once a year. I did it last year. I'm doing it this year, so that's what you'll have looking forward to this whole month. Plenty of episodes, plenty of videos for y'all just to, you know, enjoy each day. So, got that coming out. Now, guys, that's the end of this one. Hopefully you had a good takeaway from this. There was a big learning curve for me on this particular build because I went from never making a hidden tang knife to having to work on a guard fitment for a hidden tang knife to never making a guard like this to figuring it out as I go. Absolutely awesome. I love obtaining new skills. This is one of the things that I'm going to be recreating in the future. So really awesome. Guys, thank you all for coming by. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or one of my other videos. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.